And let's wait for the camera. All right. Hello, my name is Sean Marsh, and I'm here today to talk to you about why we should not provide free needles to drug addicts to prevent the spread of bloodborne diseases. According to John Pearson and Nancy Sprague, the city of Vancouver, British Columbia, a relatively small city, about 144,000, which has 5,000, or 3.5% of its residents, are intravenous drug users. Despite, or perhaps partly due, to the city's liberal drug policies and the largest needle exchange program in North America, the number of Vancouver addicts affected with HIV has risen from 1 to 2% in 1988 to 23% by 1997 and as high as 30% in 2003. An incredible 90% of Vancouver's drug addicts are estimated to have hepatitis C. Needle exchange programs straddle a line between stemming the spread of bloodborne diseases and enabling or encouraging people to use illicit drugs. This leaves society with a moral choice, finding a way to curb the spread of bloodborne diseases without encouraging the abuse of substances. Um, injecting drugs is a dangerous habit that can lead to death by overdose or the contraction of HIV or hepatitis C. By providing drug users with free needles, we put them at risk for overdose. We also put the society at risk because of improperly disposed of needles. And we may actually encourage new drug use. Injecting powerful drugs into our veins is very dangerous, which is why when they're used for medical procedures, a specially trained doctor called an anesthesiologist administers them. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, there were 15,482 heroin-related deaths in 2017. Data from the CDC suggests that the most common transmission of hepatitis C is intravenous drug use. The CDC also found that people diagnosed, 9% of people diagnosed with HIV were intravenous drug users. So I think it's safe to say, and we can all agree, that injecting drugs is dangerous to our health and life. Providing needles to people who inject drugs may make us complicit in their death if they overdose and die. Supporters of needle exchange programs suggest that people are going to inject drugs anyways. So why not provide them with clean needles so they do not con so they do not contract bloodborne diseases and it does not become a burden to our healthcare system? Well, let me ask you this. Would you consider giving someone that is hell-bent on playing Russian roulette a more powerful pistol with more chambers, which would give them more chances of an empty chamber, and just in case they pull the trigger on the loaded chamber, it would kill them instantly, so they would not have to suffer, and it would not add an undue burden to our healthcare system. The reality is, as it comes as it applies to implicit drug use, the more powerful gun is here, and it's called fentanyl. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, since its recent emergence, it was involved in at least 37% of heroin-related overdose deaths in 2016. Since the legalization of needle exchange programs in Colorado, overdose deaths have increased. There were 149 more in 2016 than there were in 2011. Providing needles to people who inject drugs put the public at risk due to used needles being left in public spaces. Needle exchange programs are supposed to operate on a one-to-one -one exchange. Now this is to ensure that the needles that are passed out will be returned and can be properly disposed of. The reality is that these programs hand out more needles than they receive. In 2011, the Boulder, Colorado Needle Exchange Program passed out 83,550 needles. 
and they took back in 80,890. Now that's 2,660 opportunities for the public to for the public to be exposed to these needles. Now there's no limit to how many needles you can get. According to an investigation by NPR, they found that, if, that at a facility in Philadelphia would exchange three to 400 needles to one person at a time, which are then taken to an area of the city where people inject drugs and they're sold for a dollar a piece. The person NPR interviewed admittedly picked those needles up off the ground, exchanged them, and then sold them to fuel his own drug habit. While you could argue that it was a positive, that at least clean needles were available for those people to use, I see it in a different light. This will give people a sense that needles are readily available, and after they're done using them, they just throw them on the ground. And I think as I pointed out earlier, this is exactly what happened and why they're readily picked up off of the street. Providing needles to people who inject drugs may actually encourage new drug use. Again, supporters of these needle, free needle programs feel that people will inject drugs anyways. And if we provide them with clean equipment, we are keeping them safe from blood-borne diseases. However, Readily available clean needles, cooking spoons, and filtering media may also encourage intravenous drug use. Data suggests that illicit drug use in Colorado has increased since the legalization of needle exchange programs. According to a group called Heroin Colorado, the seizure rates of heroin have increased 2400% between 2011 and 2016. And I have two questions. Do clean free needles encourage the person who is afraid to try injecting drugs because sharing a needle could expose them to a blood-borne disease? And do free needles encourage the person that has tried injecting drugs before and was afraid to continue to use because of the danger associated with sharing needles? Now these are two questions I had when I started my research and I could not find conclusive answers to either of them. However, I think because they're not represented by the data that they're important questions to follow up on. So I've demonstrated that by providing free needles to drug users, we have exposed them to, to risks other than the spread of blood-borne diseases. And because we cannot control what happens to the needles, when they leave these programs, we are exposing the public to the potential risks associated with used needles. And when we remove the risk of transmission of blood-borne diseases, it is possible we are encouraging people to use drugs because the fear of getting one of these diseases isn't there anymore. So where are the needle exchange programs taking us as it relates to drug use in our society? As intravenous drug use increases, so does the likelihood of overdose. Now some cities are offering in addition to free needles and other paraphernalia, a facility where you can, the user can go and inject. In cases where an overdose occurs, these facilities would have trained personnel that could administer an anti-overdose drug. I'll leave you with another surprising statistic about Vancouver. In 2018, at least one person died a day on all but 11 days. The increase of fentanyl-related deaths in Vancouver has a provincial health officer suggesting that what is needed is access to a regulated, clean supply of drugs. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel that providing people with free needles a safe place to use, and a clean supply of drugs is a step back for modern society. And I think the people with these drug problems need our help, not our enablement. Thank you.